Tonight, tragedy in Colorado Springs after a gunman attacks an LGBTQ nightclub. I saw the flash of the muzzle when I looked to my left. People inside share the horrors of what happened. Realize that the shooter was looking in our direction. While police investigate the motive, we learn more about the heroes who stopped the killer. At least two heroic people inside the club confronted and fought with the suspect. Two people who risked their lives to save many others. Her dozens and dozens of lives stopped the man cold. And a live look tonight at a memorial in Colorado Springs near Club Q. People have spent the day paying their respects and mourning those who died in this senseless attack. And a huge crowd turned out for this interfaith service in the Springs. This is Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day set aside to remember those killed in anti-trans violence. And on this night, they're remembering those killed and wounded in the shooting. Good evening, I'm Kelly Worthman. Thank you for joining us here on CBS4 and now streaming on CBS News Colorado. That shooting happened just before midnight last night. The gunman killed five people and wounded 25 others. Police say people inside the club stopped that gunman before officers arrived. 22-year-old Anderson Aldrich is now in custody. The motive remains unclear. Our team coverage includes Spencer Wilson and Olivia Young talking with witnesses and leaders of the LGBTQ community. We begin tonight with Karen Morfitt with the very latest on the investigation. Karen. Well, Kelly, it's been nearly 24 hours, and this remains a very active scene. You can see behind me here the command center. Law enforcement has been here throughout the day combing over this parking lot, nearby parking lots, looking for bullet holes in neighboring business walls, and they've been going in and out of Club Q, where witnesses tell us it now looks like a war zone. Hours after a gunman opened fire inside Club Q in Colorado Springs, law enforcement could be seen combing over the crime scene. We are working tirelessly to ensure that justice for the victims in this senseless and evil shooting is given. Colorado Springs Police Chief Adrian Vasquez says the suspect, 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, was stopped by two brave patrons. Michael Anderson, a bartender at Club Q, says they saved his life. They tackled him. And, and they were beating him up and that gave me enough time to grab my stuff and, and leave. Jericho Lovall, who was shot in the leg and is now out of the hospital, saw them leap into action as well. The people that got on top of them had people that were already injured and had already been shot. But the guy held him down and kept him down until the police arrived. The gunman now in custody and questions about his past surfacing. Our investigators, our detectives are looking into the history of uh, of uh, Mr. Aldridge at this point in time. Last year, an Anderson Aldrich of the same age was responsible for a bomb threat that led to the evacuation of an entire neighborhood. He was arrested for kidnapping and felony menacing, a case that, according to the Gazette, a Colorado Springs newspaper, was never prosecuted. There are certain protocol that we have to follow, uh, and so when we can release information on that, we will. Officials would not say that the shooting was a hate crime, only that they're looking at the investigation through that lens. But those who saw Club Q as their safe haven believe this was an attack on their community. It's not a safe space anymore. It's not. I, I personally cannot go back in there. I know I can't, and I don't want to. Investigators, again, have not officially linked that 2021 case last year to this shooter, despite the same name and age range. And because that case was dismissed, the court records on it have likely been sealed. The next update from law enforcement is expected to happen sometime tomorrow before noon. For now, we're live in Colorado Springs. Karen Morfitt covering Colorado First. Karen, thank you. Now, the Colorado Springs Police Chief did call Club Q a safe haven for our LGBTQ citizens. Its owners joined events all day today, showing their continued support for the victims. Spencer Wilson spoke with those owners earlier today. And Spencer, it sounds like it's been a hard journey for them even since they opened that club. That's right, and they told me things have gotten so much better, but 20 years ago, they say, the city didn't even want this club here. They say that this is a disappointing reminder that there are still some people here in Colorado Springs who don't want them here, and they're willing to act on that. 
Club Q's owners know who was in their club on Saturday night, their friends and acquaintances. A safe space for the LGBTQ plus community they've helped foster and grow, now mourning after a senseless tragedy. For them to be there doing that on a normal Saturday night with no warning, it, 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 it is horrific. There are stories of heroes. Someone charged the gunman and took him down. Absolutely saved dozens and dozens of lives. Stopped the man cold. cold and it was tracks. and he was and he fought. everyone else was running away and he ran towards. Protecting people in a place that has always been about protecting people. The owners say Club Q was the only gay bar in Colorado Springs for many years. The only place where some people could really be themselves. Has given people a sense of home, a sense of safeness a sense of ability to come out, find their gender, find their sexuality without the judgment of others. Especially in a town that has a history of a lack of support. We are so lucky how it has changed since, you know, the last 20 years. Obviously, there's still work to be done. That work right now is supporting each other. For the moments, the grief becomes too much. And it, it, it's going to take days, if not weeks, if not months, for ourselves in this community to wrap their heads around um, the hate, the, the injuries, the death that came last night. Now, the owners wanted everybody to know that the Satellite Hotel has given them a room for anyone to come over to help support each other, even just come for a hug, if that's what they need. It is open to anyone who is interested. They said, just come on down. Live in Colorado Springs, Spencer Wilson covering Colorado First. Spencer, thank you. It should have been me. That is what one of the survivors told our reporter, Justin Adams, and shared how he made it out of that club alive. I lost friends. I'm not okay. Hours after the deadly shooting at Club Q, Joshua Thurman still cannot believe he made it out alive. No one deserves this. You know, this should have been me. Joshua was on the dance floor when he heard gunshots. He thought it was the music until he heard another round go off. I saw the flash of the muzzle when I looked to my left, and I took off running uh, to the dressing room. In the dressing room, he was joined by two others. Immediately, they shut off the lights, hit on the floor, and called police. It was a mix of scared, nervous, trying to be strong, and trying not to be loud because even though the doors were locked, there was nothing from stopping that man coming through those doors if he really wanted to. Fortunately, the gunmen didn't find him. They hid for some time until Joshua decided to crawl out of the room and saw a police officer. And I saw an officer and I was like, officer, is it okay if we come out? As they were being escorted out, they saw just how close they were to losing their lives. Bodies on the ground, blood, shattered glass window. It was just, it was so heartbreaking. Joshua knows there is a long road ahead for healing. We're shattered, we're broken. I don't know how we're going to get past this, honestly, but we have no choice. Justin Adams, covering Colorado First. And Michael Abeda also talked to a friend of one of the victims of the shooting. They were there last night supporting their friend who was performing at that club. As you can see from this growing memorial in Colorado Springs outside Club Q, many in this city are mourning, including a couple who was at the club when the shooting happened. It was just a bloody massacre. That type of violence was not what married couple Felicia Juvera and Gil Rodriguez expected when they went out to Club Q for the first time since 2019. They went Saturday night to support their friend Tara, or DJ T Beats, who was DJing at the club. We just went out to go support her and, you know, show love. So we thought it was just going to be casual, very light. But around midnight, their lives changed. Everyone heard a gunshot, which initially they thought was part of the music, until Gil's Air Force training kicked in. in my military background, told me otherwise. I flipped the table that we were sitting next to for cover and I just yelled for everyone to get down. They say a shooter walked in the front door of Club Cube and started firing near the bar. All we heard was just him kind of gradually going through the club and just shooting as he was kind of like walking. It was almost like target practice really for him. Gil jumped on Felicia to protect her. I felt a bullet graze my foot, um, which kind of like woke me up to realized that the shooter was looking in our direction. He then called 911, and when the shooting stopped, he and Felicia started helping people evacuate the bar. People were holding different body parts from in the back alley, the front of the, the club, the side, side parking lot. People were pretty, pretty injured all over. 
Among the carnage, they saw a familiar face. When I seen a body just uh, laying on their back and I immediately ran over there and it was our friend Tara who got hit in the back. Felicia stayed with Tara until paramedics arrived while Gil directed first responders. They say it still feels like a nightmare. Prayers and condolences go out to all the families affected, you know, that obviously aren't, weren't able to walk out from, from that scene. Now, Felicia and Gill say their friend Tara will be okay. She had to have many surgeries, but is expected to survive. In Colorado Springs, Michael Aveta covering Colorado First. Queer bars across our state are now holding vigils and events to support the shooting victims. Olivia Young joining us live in Denver tonight. And Olivia, the bars here wasting no time getting support together. This tragedy is being felt across the state, Kelly, and today Denver queer community reacting with a show of support, but also anger at another instance of hate-fueled violence. Today of all days, it's, it's just, it's a hit, so. On Transgender Day of Remembrance, Colorado's queer community woke to news of a mass shooting at an LGBTQ nightclub. I grew up about 10 minutes away from Club Q, having a safe space and just seeing that very um, personally violated is, it's really difficult. A Denver business creating an online fundraiser for the victims, raising $250,000 in the first 12 hours. Our followers just kind of took off with it and shared it. The fundraising site has verified the fundraiser and will work with third party agencies to disperse the funds. Our intent is to first cover the funeral expenses of the victims and then beyond that, you know, medical expenses, therapy expenses. Meanwhile, Denver nonprofit Parasol Patrol sending volunteers to a Colorado Springs vigil. In this world right now, our babies aren't always safe. The group uses rainbow umbrellas to shield children from protesters at LGBTQ events. We deal with grown adults that come with bullhorns to yell at children. And so when events like this happen, sadly, we aren't shocked. Ripley blames rhetoric by politicians and celebrities for an increase in homophobic violence. It makes it feel safe and okay for that bigotry and that hatred to come out of the closet. Now she's asking the public to turn tears into action. Ripley wants people to show support for the queer community through volunteering, posting online, and standing up to hate speech in everyday life. Parasol Patrol will be sending more volunteers to another Colorado Springs vigil tomorrow, as well as one here in Denver. I'm Olivia Young, covering Colorado First.